and one of the things I was going to talk about today, I was hoping we'd have a few people here because we get questions all the time about what SPW is. Phyllis, you know what it is. Yes, ma'am. You've been there with me and done that with me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but a lot of people don't really understand what SPW is. And since it rules our lives as notaries, they need to know that. So uh, should we get started? We well, Hopefully we'll grow the number yes. of people that are right. here. Beth will be here in 20 to 30 minutes. She said she um, got... Yeah, she had something that was go was going on. So, Phyllis, you want to introduce yourself? Oh, okay, sorry. Okay, my name is Phyllis Trailer, and I am located in San Antonio, Texas. I'm the owner of my San Antonio Mobile Notary and the Texas Notary Public Training Academy. I am a former student of Carol's, and Carol is my sister. She tells everybody we have different mothers, but we're sisters. And we've been working yeah. together for quite a while, Carol and I. And I've really become and excited about primetime notaries. Carol? Okay. And I'm Carol Ray. I'm the owner of Notary to Pro. And uh, yeah, I feel like sis she and I have become very, very close, almost like sisters. Um, and uh, we're hoping that this will go and it'll grow and we can share our thoughts and our feelings about being uh, senior people in this industry and the things that we face that are a little different than when we were in our 20s and our 30s. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm going to introduce Valerie, let her tell you about herself. Well, my name's Valerie Dennis, and I am in Austin, Texas, just up the road a piece from Phyllis. Um, the name of my company is Centex Mobile Notary and Process Servers. We, um, I started this just about two and a half, maybe two and three quarters years ago, uh, in August of 2017. Um, and unexpectedly, it just went nuts. I mean, I turned off my notifications today because I got really tight. Snapdox is having a hard time finding notaries in Austin. So any of you Texas notaries, if you wanna move here, please do. Um, we could use some help. Um, but you know, I really enjoy this. And I really, what I really like the most is the support. Um, Carol has, I've not taken much advantage of her, but I learned how to do this from her. And then Phyllis taught me how to be a really great Texas notary. Um, and so I tell people all the time, especially our Texas notaries, call Phyllis. And then if they have questions about, um, anybody has questions about the training that's taken notary to pro is, why didn't you call Carol yet? So I'm really pleased to be part of this group. Thank you for that. And not here just yet. But she will join us. Is another student of mine. Her name is Beth, and she's from um, Arizona. And she's she's a delightful person. And she is as smart as they come. She's a great signing agent, and I'm so proud. All these people, they're just wonderful. So uh, we welcome you. Um, hopefully, we'll grow a little bit. I thought we might have a pretty good crowd today because of everybody being hunkered at home. And Yolanda, I see you. Yolanda is a brand new student as of just a few hours ago. All right. And uh, <laughs> she's so enthusiastic. I can't wait to work with her. <laughs> uh, so anyway, does anybody have anything that they'd like to discuss or bring up right now? Sharon, Yolanda, I don't see anybody else. Uh, I know there's other people here, but I don't see them. Let's see. Teresa, Romika, Philip, Janice, Lisa, and Yolanda. Yolanda, where are you from? Hi, I am in Ohio. More specifically, I am in Cleveland, the Cleveland area. Well, thank you for joining us. You are in good hands with Carol Ray. 
Yes, I am so excited. I am trying to keep myself calm with excitement, quite <laughs> honestly. I signed up. So yesterday I sent an email, right, saying, okay, you know, I'm really new at this. I just completed my Ohio certification, had my criminal check, and I'm like, do you think it's too soon? Well, I couldn't even wait two hours. I had to go ahead and sign up. And then I've just been listening to the... Um, the audio and watching the videos and I'm getting ready to take this class. So I'm just, I am thrilled. I felt like when um, I spoke with her today um, and before I spoke with her today, I had been watching you all on video, right? So you all are doing like um, some of the TNT or, you know, just, I've been all over just watching you all on video. So I feel like Valerie, I saw you on video talking um, about Ron, R-O-N, right? So I've been looking at all of you and I'm just like, I just feel like you all, as everybody has said, so open. I have no idea. I mean, I've been watching how to fill, do a, a acknowledgement and Noah Jarrett, I have to, you know, do the oath. These are the simple things that you all have been teaching me um, over the internet and you have no idea. I admire you, I respect you, and I appreciate you. Um, as I go along this journey, I have, I don't, I didn't have a mentor, but when I hear Valerie say how excited she is and Phyllis and, and Carol just calling me and making me feel welcome, while I don't have a clue as to what I'm doing today, I feel confident that I'm in great hands, no question. You are, you are. Um, does anybody have anything they want to talk about? Well, I, I have a couple questions if you if you all don't mind. <laughs> no, please okay. go ahead. All right, so let me tell you just, I know they're gonna be kind of simple things. Um, so let's just start with the acknowledgement. I've watched, I've heard Carol talk to me through the audio. I watched her on the video. And so I understand, see this is probably what my challenge is. I haven't ordered my supplies. So you know they have a stamp and a seal. Should I have both? That's what I was thinking. I would get both, but I don't know when you use a stamp and when you use the seal. Those are simple things, but I don't know. Are you well, talking stamp about the embosser? Yeah, that's what she's talking about. Yeah, the embosser. That's the yeah. proper word, Valerie. Thank you. The embosser. Thank uh -huh. you. Well, I just uh, counseled somebody. I don't remember what group it was in. They were asking about it. It is an expense that is mostly unnecessary. Um, it, the only people I know that are going to ask you to use that would be a lawyer on a will. Um, I think Phyllis answered that question in the other group that she's never used hers. No, I didn't say that because no. I always encourage my students to, you know, it depends on you know, what type of work you're going to focus on, if you're going to, and who your target market is. So, and I always encourage my students to identify a target market, because that way you'll know what type of supplies and stuff you want to buy. So for me, my target market eventually became, grew into uh, including attorneys. And so attorneys, like for you to use those on wheels and it's just because the embosser when you use the gold seal with them it's just more appealing and so and i have run into uh two clients who like to like for me to use it so i also use the fact that i use an embosser as a marketing tool because i know a lot of notaries don't spend the extra money to get one so i'll be contacted just because i use an I use the embosser. So it just depends on where you want to focus your your time. That's what I tell everybody. The the purpose, if you don't know it, is that uh, the, the one good thing about it, and that's why it's used a lot on wills, is because when you use the embosser, that's yours. Nobody can duplicate it. There's no way that they can do that. So if anybody were to ever exchange paperwork, on let's say a will and put in their own paperwork, uh, they're not gonna have that embosser. So if this ever goes to court or anything, 
then the attorneys can show that there's there's some differences that you know page one through three is embossed uh five through six is embossed and four is missing that kind mm -hmm. of thing but other than that i never had one incident where i would have used an embosser i find it's an expense that really isn't necessary unless you are doing a lot of work with attorneys other than that it's useless everyone else wants your stamp and i will point out something else for somebody who's doing and i go through this in my course extensively because everybody gets the word seal when they see after a signature line on all these documents you'll see the borrower's signature line and the word seal at the end of it that mm -hmm. does not mean that you're going to be putting your stamp all over that paperwork that just means it comes from hundreds of years ago when people used to use wax seals uh, or some sort of identification way of when they signed their names on the line, then um, it, it was their way of, of almost taking an oath where it said by uh, placing my seal here, my hand seal, my wax stamp, whatever, that I'm telling the truth. And, um, and that was basically what it was. Why they do it today, I will never know. It's the most ridiculous thing. Uh, that they they do I, I don't i don't even know if they even know why what they're doing so don't ever stamp it there never okay i have that another question um i just want to put this out there and, and you know carol you can tell me to to deal with it later but in the state of ohio now effective at in at, i think september end of september and roger wrote some of the laws for us to do online notarizations so i completed and passed the exam for both what we call traditional as well as online when you submit your application um, for online you have to um, decide on a third party or whatever the proper term platform is. yes a platform and i was listening to valerie and all the different people on that um, different um, WebEx I was watching and you can change it but I'm just like I feel like I'm almost stuck in this place because it's like and I can change it I all I have to do is contact the state um, but I feel like I don't even know who I want to put doc verify so that's why I'm watching um, the different videos with what people are saying about Pavasco or something and but I never heard anybody mention DocuSign that's not an option is it nobody talks that they talk doc verify not DocuSign well they're they're two different they're two different entities but I'm glad you brought this up uh, because of course this is the big thing now uh, especially with everybody sequestered and you know doing the online be very careful everybody needs to be really careful and do due diligence because these companies are getting away with um charging so much money up front uh and and i think phyllis and i've got something going that i'm real we're we're really taking a look at i had some uh people contact me they they represent themselves as five scientists uh, from the they're from the Ukraine and they're here in the United States now living here and families here they um, are software engineers and they've had other businesses they, they did something with healthcare uh, and turned it into a good business and sold it and now they are in they're looking at this that created software uh, for this platform and they want some help in trying to get it out there uh phyllis and i are interested in taking a look at them citing if it's worth you know really working with them maybe because they're not going to charge notaries anything up front nothing mm -hmm. and there's not going to be any monthly fees because these companies are there's so few of them they've kind of got a monopoly on it mm -hmm. and um I hate seeing my students put that money out. I mean, as much as what, how much, six, 
six eight hundred dollars on a couple of them that you have to put up front yeah and you don't know what you're going to be doing what you're going to be getting and the pay is can be very small you know they the standard is um that they can charge like 25 dollars if you're at home and you're answering the phones and they're giving you certain hours to answer the phones and do what basically is general notary work, but through Ron, then they will charge a basic fee of $25 for each document uh, that you present to that notary. Notary is getting like $5 out of that. That can be great if, you're, if they keep you busy. Uh, long story, they were using my graduates to just launch this whole thing in Virginia when it when it first was um, you know put into law and I called one of them because I needed it it was an extraordinary circumstance but I didn't have a notary <laughs> do it online and when I called I got one of my graduates and uh, and so we we were both excited to connect and and it, she worked for two weeks, a couple of days a week, just being in her house. When the phone rang, she answered it, and she was able to notarize documents. And she made $500 the first two weeks that she was working, just sitting at home. So it can be really profitable. It's more profitable for the, you know, for the provider. So you want to be careful, and and I just I don't want to see the the notaries doing all the work and not benefiting uh, like they should be. So I mean, we Phil haven't, talked I haven't about, talked to them. Uh, Phil has talked about how she uses several different things, and it didn't seem like Phyllis that you used a specific platform. But I, is that correct? Can you kind of I watched I would rewind it so I could hear you say it over again. I'm like, what all does she do? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I guess I kind of boycotted everybody because <laughs> I didn't want to spend all of that money, you know, that startup fee. I mean, everybody wanted a uh, a large uh, startup fee, and I was like, you know, it has to be a way that you can do this without spending all that money. Now, even putting all of those different uh, softwares together that I use, you know, they still, they still add up, you know, cause you're looking at different software cause I use Zoom. I started off using Adobe, uh, Acrobat. So of course that's a monthly fee. Then I have, uh, have to be able to store my videos. Then I have to have a, um, something to, uh, to record my, um, my electronic notarizations. So, but still, even by putting all of those and also a uh, verification, a third party vendor to verify IDs, but still by putting all of those together, like I did, it was still so much cheaper than going with one of the, the vendors. I mean, because, you know, the, the vendors that Carol was talking about are vendors that are hiring notaries to actually sit at home and, and do the notarizations oh. or sit in and sit in their office and do the online notarizations. But I didn't want to do anything for anybody else. I wanted to do them strictly for myself because mm -hmm. in Texas we can charge $31 for doing the notarization and that's what I wanted to charge. And I wanted to get the whole $31. Mm -hmm. So that's why I put this platform together. But there's other platforms that allow you to work for yourself to do the online notarizations, but they charge you every time you do an online notarization. And that's what I was trying to avoid. So that's why I put together these different or uh, these different softwares in order for me to be able to do the online notarizations. And they work for me, but you know, they are, um, it might be a little uh, challenging for somebody that hasn't been doing no, hasn't been doing notarizations for a while. It could pro probably be a little bit confusing, but for me, I make it work and I can, you know, make a pretty good profit off of 
the uh, online notarizations that I do. Are you going to train people to do that for themselves? Uh, I am. I am toying with that, and I was thinking. I was just getting ready because I started a uh, Texas online notary uh, group, and I was just getting ready to present that to the group when you called me about that uh, the group from the Ukraine. And so I said, well, let me see what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. And then there's also another gentleman that I'm talk talking to, too. He also has a platform that I'm going to look at on uh, Saturday. So I want to look at these platforms, understand them, and be able to present them to the group. Because... When I, when I show that to them, I want them to be informed and be able to make an informed decision about, okay, which platform uh, will be most useful to them, most cost effective to them, the one that's going to help them make the most money. That's well, maybe you and I can talk off of, off of this plat off of this platform yeah. and figure this out. We, Phil, Phyllis and I are are great buddies we trust each other and we we have one thing in mind and that's our our, our notaries our students uh, the people that we guide into this business we both care you know a great deal so so we'll come up with an answer that's not going to cost everybody a lot of money the, and that's the goal we want the notaries to make as much money as possible doing this yeah you know, we love our okay. notaries <laughs> Anybody else out there have anything to say? How come we can only see a few of you? How about the rest of you? Get brave. Turn on your cameras. <laughs> At least give us a, a voice, a glimpse, anything. I don't care. Check out my hair, everybody, and then feel free to open your cameras because my ah, hair there's Ramika. There's Ramika. <laughs> and Emily. Hi, Emily. It sounds like romper room. <laughs> And Lisa says she doesn't have one hooked up. Oh, okay. Well, darn. <laughs> I understand that. I personally am wearing my muumuu. That's what I live in at home. It's either that or my PJs with the little puppies all over. <laughs> and there's Doug, Andrea. Hi. <laughs> um, so does anybody have any questions? What, what's it like? Are you anybody working? out of this group here or are you pretty much at home i hit the streets last week um but i'm still limiting you know i'm, I'm not trying to do five closings in a day i'm <coughs> limiting to one or two because i still have my my people from california that are scheduling you know anywhere from one to seven or eight different um online sessions to do their trust documents um so i've been kept pretty busy this whole time but i thought i would like to get back out there because i did miss being around the people uh until yesterday when i waited all afternoon for two appointments one of them canceled about 20 minutes before the appointment and the other one canceled by title 30 minutes after the appointment and I'm like, I don't think I like this anymore. Because <laughs> I have been spoiled. My, my The lawyers, have, you know, I, I tell everybody with the online notarization, I have to have the document the day before. Because mm -hmm. I have to make sure, you know, that it's ready. Um, every state, I would imagine, is going to have different wording on their online certificates. Uh, Texas does for sure, so I have to make sure I get them that way. But yeah, I've been kind of spoiled staying home, and it's been different being back out on the out in public. Yeah, uh, Sharon, you just did a, a a closing, didn't you? No, what happened with that one? Remember, uh, the guy was the uh, signer was angry because of the paperwork, so that one fell through. But I did do one last night. And it was uh, um, a refi, but the paper, it was from California. So the documentation was a little bit different. 
uh, than the normal Texas that I uh, that I'm used to doing. But um, my question is, how do you guys do five and six, seven, eight, nine, ten signings in one day? I just, I, I, don't, I don't get that. I, I just don't. How do you do it? Do you have time? I know, and I'm a newbie, so it takes time for me to prep my documents. So if you do five signings in a day, do you not prep your documents? You just take that package and go to the signing. I mentally I can't do that yet. I'm not at a point where I can just uh, print out my documents and head to the signing without any kind of preparation. But I see on different pages where people are doing five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten signings in a day. And, and Ramika and I have talked about this. We like, how do you physically do that? I mean, that's just, I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't get it. Maybe if you live in a small town where you don't have to travel the distance. <laughs> What what is it? I, I if I have to do three more than three in a day, I, I'm a mess. Yes, a mess. Um, I do know there are people that talk about you know oh I had eight eight closings yesterday. I'm like, and you're still alive. Well, <laughs> I'm just thinking, how do you? I would be afraid that I would miss something you know, trying to get do that many signings in a day and you have to go through and make sure you got all the signatures. Uh, I like to, I prep my package beforehand. Um, and so I just don't, I don't see it. I, and I don't know, maybe once, maybe a couple of years down the road, I'll maybe be able to do three to four in a day, but I, I just, I don't know. We used, we used to do that. We used to do that many, but only at the end of the month. And it was my husband and myself. Uh -huh. We when we lived in Arizona, we started working together. And prior to that, I did it by myself. But when we were there, he um, went with me, and he learned to do it. And we became uh -huh. both were notaries. And one time I would present, and sometimes he would present. The other one would be checking documents, filling in the notary journal. So we worked in you know together. Uh -huh. And at the end of the month, the last two days. To, to sign at the end of the month, we would often do seven to ten in a day, and but we would we would really set the appointments. We didn't right. take right. appointments at the time they wanted it. We were in control. If mm -hmm. if we found people that could do it at six o'clock in the morning, because they go to work early, mm -hmm. we would book that at five or six o'clock in the morning. And then we would work it out so that we, we said it has to be it's this, this time. This is what we need from you. This is crunch time. It's the end of the month. And be open and honest with them and tell them we don't want to shortchange you. We want to you know, give you full service, go through these documents. But this is what we need from you in order for you to get closed when you want to get closed, mm -hmm. which was during that month. Mm -hmm. And uh, we made it work. Uh, the worst one that we ever had, we started at six o'clock in the morning. And this was documents were given to us the day before. There was no last minute stuff mm -hmm. that goes mm -hmm. on. Um, but we started it. Um, I think our appointment was at 530 or something. We worked until 11 o'clock that night. Oh. 11 o'clock. We had to get everything signed before the midnight hour. And we had the stack of documents. We had all the, everything ready, you know, to go envelopes and, you know, the FedEx stuff. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I'll never forget, we went to this barbecue place in Arizona that was open until two as a bar and a barbecue place. We had a really nice dinner. It was the first thing we ate all day long other than a couple of snacks. We went home and we stayed up until I think it was three or three thirty in the morning, going for the, the second time through the documents, putting them in all the envelopes, taping everything up, and went to bed at like four o'clock in the morning. Mm. Not one error, not wow. one problem, and we made um, like twelve hundred dollars or something that day. Mm -hmm. That was big stuff, but it was the two of us. And, right. Uh, 
but you're right. If you did that every day, I don't see how people do it. I, I just don't. No. <clears throat> to me, I think my quality of work goes over the quantity of work, and you know, and I just feel if I had that many, even uh, four signings in a day, um, I just feel like I'm gonna miss something. And like I said, I'm a newbie, so I'm not at the point where I can just take that package and brush dash off to the uh, to the signing and you know make sure that I don't miss a signature or an initial or notarization. I'm just not there yet. Yeah, but you will you will eventually yeah. get there, you know. And it also depends on you know the the size of the package. Right. Like I used to do a lot for, it used to be called Title Source. Now they're called uh, AMROC. So when they was doing Title Sources, Quicken Loans, they were like less than 100 pages. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I could do five or six of those easy. Right. In a day. Mm -hmm. Well, Quicken yeah. Loans, right, even now is, they're very, very easy. And yeah. They make it so easy for you. Mm -hmm. so Quicken Loans, I think uh, Quicken Loans is in Ohio. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> well, hopefully you can get on with uh, with um, Amrock. Uh, Amrock, and I mean they have the the packages are so nice and neat and just easy. You, did you have like three notarizations? Yeah, yeah, I have no idea. Like I like that info, I have nothing. But I have Carol and Phyllis and Sharon <laughs> <laughs> and Carolyn. So and with Am Amrock, don't you have to be have notary? Be a, notary, uh, a loan signer for two years before you can be considered. I don't know. Most of the time. Yeah. Yeah. You never know. I mean, you know, I would would uh, I would when I first started out, I would just like, well, all we had at that time when I first started out was was notary rotary. That was a place to hang out and find out where the uh, title companies and signing companies were the, which ones were the best to work with. And I would just listen to, you know, what those other notaries would say, the ones that have been doing them for the longest. Mm -hmm. And they would name a, a title company or a, um, a signing company and have good things to say about them. And I would contact them. Also, uh, I went to, one year I went to the um, NNA conference. It was the, probably the second year I was a, a Texas notary and they had the conference in Austin and they had a lot of title companies at the conference. And so you were able to do one-on-one -on -one with, the, with the title company mm -hmm. and they were encouraging people that had attended the conference to sign up with them. And that's how, that's actually how I got onto uh, Title Source, which is now AMROC, was okay. from that uh, conference. So one of the things that came up in, I don't remember which group it was, is, um, you know, I, somebody was asking about like, what does this mean when it comes from Snap Docs? You know, these weird, um, so one of the things that I have been able to do just because, I don't know why I can remember all that, but not, what I did yesterday, but um, so I, I, I'm getting to know my signing services, their title companies, and the title companies lenders. And the reason that that's important is because if I get a Mr. Cooper loan from anywhere, and they're not always unique to one title company, I know it's, it's gonna be up over 150 pages. If I get uh, anything from Solidify, which is a title company, but they hire their notaries direct, um, I know it's gonna almost always be more than 150 pages and closer to 200. Um, I also got to know my area, my zip codes. Mm -hmm. And so I can take two jobs closer together if it's one of those that like Quicken, like if I get a, a Quicken loan from Amrock and then I wanna, um, I get another opportunity to take a job right before that one, um, I can take one closer to that time because I know I'm gonna have those Quicken loan documents. And 
So I can maybe take one at, you know, two hours before that, if it's close to where that one is. And so you, um, you just have to get yourself organized to the point where you can look at your calendar and you can say, okay, I have this one and it's here and I have this one and it's here. Do I dare take another one today? Um, and I've been doing this for almost three years and I still am not comfortable taking more than three or four a day. And they have to be spread out. I don't like my, my signings to be more, less than three hours apart. And also you have to plan for scanning. So I don't take a lot of those because that means I have to come back home. Um, and it's just, you know, when, when you're younger, um, I heard a rumor anyway, you have more energy. And so, <laughs> and so you, you, can, you can push harder. Um, I wasn't doing this when I was 30. When I was 30, I, I had a desk job, you know, so, but Me too. I, yeah. I can't imagine trying to, first of all, just printing, even if you don't look at the bloody documents, just printing is going to take you 15 minutes for, you know, two times your documents. Mm -hmm. Then you got to put them in a folder and then, you, you know, so you're 30 minutes fussing with that. And you mm -hmm. haven't really even looked at them, at least me. It takes me an hour. After I get my documents, it takes me an hour. Um, and because I like to check for certificates, I like to add the venues because a lot of the jurats don't have them for Texas. Um, and so a lot of the other notaries, I don't know how they get through a closing in 45 minutes when they have 18 notarizations and they don't sound like they've even filled in their name in the notary search mm -hmm. um but that's why it takes me longer i will fill out everything in the notary certificate except my signature and my stamp um and uh, that way i've spent the time at home in the comfort of my own home without an impatient borrower perhaps um or where I feel more comfortable, I have more time to answer questions um, or to call. I We called the lender three times this morning. Um, so, you know, and, and that's another thing is mm -hmm. you have to allow for that. Mm -hmm. You have to allow, I, I, I'm a 90 minute girl. Okay. I don't care what anybody says. I don't, I don't believe that the only, the only loans I can get done in 30 minutes are a Quicken loan and a tax loan and a seller. Yeah. Nothing yeah. else. If it's, if it's anything else, I'm, I got an hour to an hour and a half. Right. That's, mm -hmm. you know. And when you get to, when you get older, when, you know, you're in a situation where I, I don't want anybody to feel rushed. I had a reticent borrower yesterday um, and I told him, I said, I'm not going to be in a hurry when I get there. So if you, if you need to take time to read through the documents in paper, cause they sent them to him on the computer. Um, I'm okay with that. But some, some of the other people, they're not. Um, well, you know what we call people who can get through a signing in 30 or 40 minutes? Nuts. A lot of point errors. And signers, point and signers. Oh, yeah, I can't do that. And and that's that's not being a, a a certified notary signing agent. It's not. It's somebody that wants the money. They walk in when they point, and the person signs, and they get out of the house as fast as they can to make as much money as they can, and they do a total disservice to this business. Somebody asked me about my calendar. No, I don't use, I don't let anybody schedule for me. Um, I'm always worried if to, by, you know, Phyllis uses a, a calendar program so that for her online stuff that people can, can schedule them. I'm paranoid. I'm going to overbook. And if I'm not looking at my calendar, but I did want to show you what my calendar looks like um, because this is the only way that I can, I'm trying to, there it is. 
So if you see here, you can see that it's color coded. Mm. Okay, so this calendar is for me and my husband, um, for our personal, for our business. He has his appointment color, I have my appointment color. Um, and, uh, and then if you see here, I got one for my mom. Um, and so learn to use, so, so technology is your friend. Um, and don't ever go into anything thinking I'm too old to learn this because that's not true. Um, if you're, if you're, if you can learn how to do loan signings, you can learn how to use technology. And the Google Calendar is probably one of your biggest friends. Many of the apps like SnapDocs and a few other signing services, you can actually click a button and it puts the job right into your calendar. So after you accept a job, um, uh, I don't use like anything like Notary Assist or Notary Gadget because um, I'm not patient enough for that uh, to have to type all that stuff in on my phone. I hate doing that. But, um, you know, there's just a lot of different things that you can do to make things go easier and a little quicker for you, but never do that to where you're pushing your clients, your signers. You don't ever want them to feel like that. Oh, I'm going to interject some information here. Uh, did anybody here get invita uh, get an invitation from us? I used the April one. Because Barbara sent just now, she, I, I called, and she said that she sent out to 557 people who have signed up for this, and that they we got a congratulations from Constant Contact that said that 57% of the people had already opened it. Well, I got an email that um, email. said information. I think I got it a couple days ago. Um, and so then I went in, I was trying to find the one with the link. Um, I couldn't find it. Um, let me tell you that the last one I got. Oh, why you look for that? I just want to say something about the, the calendar that I use. I use Acuity Calendar and I have it on my website. And for my online notarizations, I love it because people can just go to that calendar and create their appointments. And with Acuity, you can buffer times between appointments. So I have more than enough time for every appointment that I take because I have a buffer when I first started off, I would buffer a half an hour before, half an hour after. That way I could have enough time between appointments and before appointments to get ready for the appointments. But it's just so much easier. And a lot of times people don't even want to talk on the phone. They just want to be able to go to your, go to your website and schedule an appointment. And I tell you, that works great for me. And I have all the information about what they need in order to uh, schedule a uh, appointment for an online notarization. I can also, with Acuity Calendar, you can also create an intake form. So I've got all these questions that they have to answer to, before they can even make that appointment so that I know they have everything they need by the time uh, I meet with them. So it just saves me so much time and it's synced to my Google Calendar. So if I have appointments on my Google Calendar, it's not going to uh, allow anybody to make any appointments during that time. Oh. Yes, I love Acuity. I got a note right here. I might change my mind. <laughs> I do. I mean, it has saved me so much time. It is not even for even when people call, I just say, go to my website, make an appointment. It has all the information there. I, I use square appointments for mine, for my mentoring appointments. Um, and that's found on the graduates website so that they can go in and schedule uh, appointments with me right there online and that I'm notified through my Google mail and an email. 
Yep, and I use mine for mentoring appointments too, the acuity. I think the gutter people are here. <laughs> oh, if you weren't here before, I was just telling them when we first opened up that we were waiting all day for these gutter people to come put gutters on the house. And uh, and they didn't show up. My husband called, you're late, you were supposed to be here. Oh, well, we'll be there in an hour. Uh, in an hour, they came all right, and they went to the wrong house, put the gutters on the wrong house. <laughs> Um, Somebody's in trouble. <laughs> I got some free gutters. <laughs> Carolyn, Which was us. If I could have cost us a thousand dollars. Oh gosh. Carolyn, I don't do. Um, I I do uh, online notarizations, and I do uh, training. So I do a lot of training and mentoring now. I used to do a lot of. Um, mobile notary appointments, a lot of loan clothing. But now I do, uh, I concentrate mm -hmm. on the training, the mentoring, and the online notarizations. Um, so I said I was going to talk about something that might be of interest, but I don't want to infringe on this this time if nobody's interested. How many, how many of you know uh, what SPW is, really know what it is? That's the, the, the NNA. That's the. Nobody knows really where it came from or what it is because I'd like to explain it. I would like okay, to because our lives are run by SPW. I know what it is. Yeah, I know. Okay, in 2013, a group of lenders and title companies got together and they said, let's get together. And we're going to tell these notaries how we want them to behave. Mm -hmm. And they were going to try to control our work uh, to, to, to the, the point of every little detail that they wanted us to act as employees, not as independent contractors. When they decided to do this, they somehow connected with the National Notary Association and they were told by the NNA, you can't do that because that's creating a monopoly. You're going to catch the Fair Trade Commission on to your, <laughs> you know, get knowledge of this and that's not going to be good for you. You can't do this. And they said, but, but we'll help you. And they started putting things together. Um, they created their website. They purchased the domain. I followed it down and found out. I'm sorry for the phones. I can't stop it. Uh, and they um, said that they was were going to help them out uh, to get through this without, you know, attracting the government attention to the monopoly. Um, I, I found out because I tracked down who created their website and who purchased the domain, and it was the NNA. I then found out that there was some of the board of directors for the NNA were on the board of Signing Professionals Work Group. And um, we formed a group of us because we didn't want this to happen at all. Uh, this group that we started was the American Association of Notaries. And the idea was, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. The idea was that you, um, that everybody in communities could go to their local administrators, their councilmen, their senators, and try to block this and get attention to the fact that this monopoly, huge monopoly was being formed that was gonna be very detrimental to this whole business. And um, we failed. We got a thousand members in the first, I think six weeks. But unfortunately, everybody sat back and was waiting for just a handful. And I think you remember this, Phyllis. I remember. It was just a few, five of us. 
-hmm. that that we're doing all the work and and nobody really wanted to participate which is a shame because that that had took over spw did so a lot of the um things that you are mandated to do today uh, come from that now some are good things because uh, we're talking about consumer protection this this came as a con uh, as a result of consumer financial protection bureau cfpb and they have mandated a lot of things that are really good but there's other things that they have you doing now that we didn't used to have to do um, as a result of spw so just just want you to know they have that code of conduct and it goes down to if you ever read it of little things like if you're if you're going to be um, <coughs> five minutes late or something, you have to call uh, the provider. And if you're in your car and something happens, it's just all kinds of little stuff. I don't remember everything. If you read that SPW code of conduct, you'll you'll see some of those things. But people ask me all the time um, that are new to the business. They wouldn't have no any reason to to know who they are, but that's what it is, so. They even had a, remember they had a script script that they wanted all of us to use. <laughs> that we were all supposed to and be assigned. That's another thing too, and I hear about scripts. I don't know who's teaching scripts, <laughs> but please don't, don't fall into that trap. The one thing I talk to my students about, and if you are one of them, you know, it's so important for you just to be who you are. When you get into a person's house, when you, from the moment you're on the porch or whatever, and you walk into their home, be yourself. Because if you're not, people will see it, they feel it instinctively, they'll put that guard up. And when they have that guard up and they, they don't really believe who you are, that same signing is not going to go well because they're not going to trust you. I think the scripts that um, people are talking about are um, like document how to how to present documents um, and that kind of thing. And um, you know, I tell people all the time, uh, your your best description of a document is usually the name of the document. Um, if you go much farther than that, you could be overstepping your bounds. Um, there's only one document that I actually, two, two documents I, I actually go over anything, and that's the closing disclosure, and I point out all the elements on the first page, and then when I get to the note and the deed, I point out that those elements all match, and that's it. Um, I read the name of the document, this is also something that can help you move through a closing a little bit quicker because you're not trying to explain something that you don't really understand a whole lot of and that you shouldn't be doing anyway. Janice, you were wanting to say something? Oh, is that all the title companies everywhere and lenders that came together to do this or just specific ones? Major ones. Maybe. Fidelity National, okay. First American Title, some of the big lenders, Chase Bank Old, was huge. Old Republic Title? Bank of Old America. Republic Title. Is that one? That's who I work for. Yeah, Old Republic Title. Actually, yeah, I've been in title business for a long time, but I haven't done this side of it before. So. A lot of them fell out uh, after okay. a while for some reason, but oh, when they first started, uh, they charged each one of them, there was, it was cost, uh, they charged them $2,000 just to be on, a, on the panel, be a member. Hmm. And anybody that wanted to join, if they've had the $2,000, they could. I thought about it, but I didn't have $2,000. <laughs> <laughs> But that's also when they changed it where we had to get the um, 
the background check every background year. screening because before we only had to do it every other year that's ridiculous you get it through your state uh -huh. and you have to be recertified every year which is ridiculous when yeah. that happened i'm like mm, i could make a lot of money if i had to recertify <laughs> all my students every year. year and i made the decision and i and i made it public i said i'm not going to do that my students are so well trained that would be just just out and out thievery if I were to re, you know, charge them to recertify them. But uh, anyway, but that's where a lot of that came from. A lot of what what costs you money. It's really unfortunate. It is. A lot of the answers to the NNA cert certification test come out of that SPW book. Mm -hmm. uh, the whole thing the whole almost. Thing it's, comes out of there. It's it's code of conduct. Yeah. People are like. Well, wait a minute. What does this have to do with being a notary? That's I want to know where I put my stamp. I don't. Yeah. I don't want to know how I'm supposed to dress. <laughs> you know, That's why I always encourage my students. You know, after they finish my training, I'm like, don't pay for that certification training with the NNA. Just, uh, I'll give you a copy of the SVW book. Use that to take that certification test. That way they only have to pay the $65 to take the test and get the background. Well, we, rec we, we recommend to our graduates spend $65, mm -hmm. go to the NNA. Uh, and I do want to say one other thing about that, about the NNA, but go to the NNA for $65, you get your background screening and you can get that test. I provide the study materials for it so they learn that code and everything and they pass and they're certified for a year and they've got the background screening i do want to say one thing because i had my issues whoa, big time with national notary association back in those days they had some really bad leaders at the time right now they have a really good ceo um I'm really impressed with him. Uh, starting with when they invited Notary to Pro to the convention, which Phyllis represented me at, that was one of them. Uh, but he's opening it up, trying to bring people in this community together, um, which is really, really nice to see um, that they're that they're doing that. This they're not closing out and trying to be the mono monopoly uh, for notaries. They're the greatest for the notaries, general notary work, but not so much for signing agents, but they've opened up that recently. Valerie, are you involved with the NNA at all? Um, I, I have a membership, but I hardly ever, I think I go there and research to try to see if I can figure out where to look in the Texas code for stuff. Um, I, I have a, a very untrusting um, stance on the NNA or any uh, non-state organization. So the Secretary of State is where all our laws are contained. And um, the NNA can sometimes they interpret and sometimes they sort of hint that you should, you know, like they give you best practices, but I've come across a couple of times where in their articles their best practices go against our code and so i i just get real nervous when uh, i hear people say I, I was reading my my handbook and i'm like well texas doesn't have a handbook so where'd you get your handbook from and they say nna i'm like you need to be very careful and you need to make sure that you compare it against your state code and rules and regulations so am i well i think one of the things that we find with the nna is that they're extremely cautious in in varying uh, giving us any um uh, anything out of the ordinary to do uh if, if they uh, like talking about explaining documents explaining documents to me is going through things and just uh, showing people where the information that they're looking for, where to locate it, what it is. It's the what and the where, I've said it before, the what and the where, not the how or the why. 
the NNA would have you go in there and literally point and sign. They don't want you to say anything because I think primarily they don't want anybody to ever come back to follow it back through the NNA that, that says, oh, the NNA tells their people that they can do this and something happened bad as a result of being told something. In other words, they don't, don't want to get into any kind of a lawsuit or any kind of problems. Uh, so they just advise you not to do anything. Yeah, but for those of you, it doesn't matter what state you're in, um, I highly recommend that you seek out the leaders in your state, the notary leaders in your state. Um, that's, you know, Phyllis is, I, that's how I found Phyllis. I needed somebody, and there's a couple other people in Texas that I get a lot of my, um, they point me in the right direction. Um, <clears throat> but there's a, you know, I, I run a, a very large uh, Facebook group for new notaries and I'm continually saying, what does your state say? What does your state say? Because if you ask a question in a notary group, a national notary group, and you say, how do I fill this out? Or is this the right certificate? Well, I, you know, you can get 20 answers and none of them will be right if they're not and if it's not somebody from your state so um it's very important to be familiar with your state rules and regulations um we're actually on an hour now uh does anybody have any anything they'd like to ask any questions anything that they want to add to the conversation how Thank about you, you for doug information Sure, I'll jump in. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. We can. Oh, awesome. Okay. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm still working on getting my first uh, signing under my belt. I'm. I'm working as an appraiser as well as a trainee appraiser, and I was just approved to take my state exam on Monday the 18th to Good. become an appraiser. So I've been waiting for six years for that. <laughs> so pretty excited to be taking that, and then. Uh, after that, I'm going to start getting into the loans and to doing some signings here real quick. So I'll be calling you, Carol. Okay. <laughs> need, need your encouragement and help. So, but yeah, I'll I'm, be I'm, there. I'm excited. Great to see everyone. Thanks for providing this for us, Carol. Thank you. Okay. Well, I think Phyllis. Where's everybody? Anything? Where's everybody from? California, soon to yeah, be in the, uh, California, Arizona, Houston, Texas, Ohio, Te Texas. Yep, another Texas. California. Janice, I don't know if you're aware of this, but I was telling uh, our newest student here, Yolanda. Yolanda, it's Yolanda, right? Mm -hmm. uh, this morning that you have a great resource as a graduate um, on the graduates website where we have graduates teaching graduates how to do other things. Roger Real, who's huge in your state, he knows everything there is to know. He has told me that any, and we've got it in the graduates website, really? any notary from Ohio he will mentor you for free. Really? Anytime you need him. Where mostly is he from? Do, no, mostly with like the Ohio law and mm -hmm. things that are specific to Ohio. So keep that in mind. He's open to, to mentoring you. Where is he from? He is the uh, creator of the uh, Society of uh, Ohio Society of Notaries. Oh. He's, he knows he's so smart. He's one of the smartest people I know. Great. Hey Janice, he's in he's near um Columbus in Dublin. Oh, okay. Now where are you, Janice? I'm in I'm Cuba. in uh, I'm just I'm in Cuyahoga Falls. Okay, I'm in Strongsville. Oh, okay. I'm not that you far from here. We need to do a meetup. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we need to. <laughs> uh, well I this is I started the course like back in March and I've just been I'm I'm working from home now for my title company. And it's like every night I, I keep wanting to keep get back to the course and I'm just exhausted. 
so, from looking at my laptop for eight hours, you know. <laughs> well, I'm starting uh, my course tonight. I'm so excited. After we get off, I'm going to hunker in. Well, I, I actually did the, the NNA one first before oh. I even knew about this. So, Well, Roger told me about this. I called him from our, oh. I saw it on the website. So we can talk offline. I don't want to be disrespectful. What's your number, Janice? <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll send it to you. <laughs> okay. I do want to mention one thing, and I, I don't understand. I feel so badly because we took on the responsibility of sending out the email. We've got it all set up on constant contact. She, we're up to like 560 people signed up. She's got, she's got the receipt, the, a, a letter from constant contact that said, wow, well, you did a great job. It was to went out to this many people. They tell you how many percentage of people open <coughs> the, open them. I posted all over Facebook. So I just, and everybody's at home. So I feel really bad. Maybe we should do another one in a week or so and, uh, and get, but test the emails first. Well, I, I got, got one I got, Carol. That's um, what I got. I got it on Tuesday, but it didn't have the link in it. No, it didn't have a link. So I just went to the website just right before and just opened the Zoom. So I don't know if that's was the invite or not. What, Valerie, what was it you just held up? Where did, where did you the, get that? This is That's the email I got, I got from, from you all on Tuesday, and it just said the latest news for you. That's the same one I got. I'll forward it to you when Me I too. get when Yeah, please do, because I feel terrible. It's you know, we, Yeah, Carol. Oh. Well done. Okay. Well, well, how do you feel? How, how do you guys feel about maybe doing this uh, next week? That would be great. Fine. Want to do that? Want to do that? We'll send out a special one and we'll do it yeah. because I know that there's people out there that are like, when are you going to do it? And I mean, they, I get calls all the time and I see it on Facebook. I know that there's a lot of people that want to be a part of this. Okay. Uh, I'll I'll take I'll figure it out. I'm going to test this email. I'm going to look and see what Barbara's sending out because she's so diligent about and so good about following through on things. I can't believe that that ball got dropped. So something's wrong. Maybe it's my mistake. <laughs> so for that, I apologize. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm I'm going to say. Everybody have a great week and weekend and stay safe. Take care of yourselves and we'll see you next week. And I'm going to turn it over to Phyllis and Valerie. And I guess Beth. She probably got hung up. Couldn't make it. Yeah, I think I think we've been on long enough. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, so <laughs> almost been an hour and a half. So. Let's uh, do this again th next week. Hopefully we'll have uh, more people be able to get the word out. Okay, same time, same place. Okay. And we're going to use the same meeting ID, right? The same yes, thing? same meeting okay. ID. Mm -hmm. Okay, good night, everybody. Sounds good. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Uh -huh. Bye-bye.